You have contributed to some of the largest scale cyber crimes known to this day, and you don't even know it. That is if you're not careful. Your device might just be part of a network of millions that can be controlled with just the click of a button. We are going to debunk how exactly these botnets work and why they are so hard to detect. Oh, and this is for educational purposes. First, we need to make a server the victim can connect to via TCP. If we can get a victim to connect, this is where things can get very dangerous. But I'll explain that in a minute. There is a problem in this documentation. I'm trying to do net.dial, but net.dial is not a thing. Oh wait, it is. Bro, what the fuck is this? <laughs> I just opened some random website. Yeah, this is bullshit. I can just close the tab. <laughs> I don't even know where that came from, some random site. Okay, we got logs working, that's brilliant. Oh, because it's obviously, I don't know why I did HTTP, because we're obviously not on HTTP. <laughs> that was stupid. I will start the client. Uh, so, we'll do go run dot, and we do connections. We've got one connection, uh, that's great. So now, if we disconnect this, it should say zero out of one connections. Yeah, beautiful. Now this isn't any old virus. Don't get me wrong, a normal virus can still do a lot of damage, but a botnet can spiral out of control very quickly. You see, a hacker will need to rent out thousands of devices to do things such as phishing and DDoS attacks without being banned or blocked immediately. But what if you could get millions of devices to do this for you, automatically? Each time a victim runs the executable, it connects to the server, and from here, over TCP, the hacker can tell all of the devices to run the same command at once. This means that all of these computers could be commanded to make requests to a website at the same time, overloading it and inevitably taking it down. I spun up some virtual machines to demonstrate how this might work. Okay, time to start all of these machines and hope my computer doesn't die. Alright, so two of them have crashed. <laughs> this is so ass. <laughs> this is so tedious, man. I actually have one more idea of what could be the issue, and it involves changing two lines. The connections... Oh, I don't know why there's seven. There shouldn't be seven, but that means that, in theory, this should work. I commanded all the machines to open Notepad, but of course, much worse could be done here. Remote command, and it should open Notepad in all of them. Okay, so we're gonna do command equals Notepad. It opens in all of them! It worked! Okay, uh, that is brilliant. That is great news. Instances equals two. Yeah, it only does it on two of them. But why are these botnets so difficult to take down? Well, first of all, these are usually self-spreading. When a victim is infected, the botnet can spread itself to all of the contacts the user has with phishing emails. This means that it would be impossible to eliminate all of the instances because they are on so many different machines. The server is what is making this all possible, so surely you need to take it down. Well, first you need to find the server. You could trace where the bot is making requests to, but then the server can just have a constantly changing IP. If the operating system were to implement a patch for this malware, each download could be altered slightly to produce a different file signature. With all this being said, as long as you don't download dodgy software or blindly download email attachments, you should be safe from all this. Operating systems and antiviruses are constantly improving. In fact, Windows had immediately detected that my program was a virus and physically would not let me run it once it had compiled. So for some reason I can't actually compile this because it thinks it's a virus. Conclusion, Windows Defender is better than me. If you enjoyed this content, definitely consider subscribing and I'll see you soon.